Hello and welcome. Let's get started with async away. Here we have a fetch call to the random users API. The random users API is supposed to send us back an object with a results array holding the random users. We're going to make this call without async await and see what gets returned as the result of our fetch request. Let's take a look. We get a promise back because right now we're running synchronous code and fetch needs some time to complete its HTTP request. All we would need to do to make this async await is to say async right here, right at before where you'd put your arguments and just await before you have to wait for something that might take some time like this fetch call. And now let's see if we get a response here. We do, we get an object response. Let's do this one more time to get the res now to equal res.json. This is another function that's asynchronous. So let's see what that passes back if we call it without awaiting it. That also just passes back a promise. So let's await that one as well and see what comes from there. Here we are, we have a results array and the info. So here's our results array and in there should be, yep, people. Here is one person, Monsieur Gianni Thomas. We have a lot to go over with async await, but first let's look at a quick diagram of how synchronous JavaScript operates. A synchronous JavaScript function, like our find name function used to be, would evaluate the first line of code, then evaluate the next line of code, and do this for as many lines of code that are there, and then return its output. Right now we're console logging, but you get the point, it'll return some sort of output. When we change to asynchronous code, this is what an asynchronous JavaScript operation will look like. We have our find name with our async in front of it, just like we did in our function. We put await before our async code. Now it passes back a promise and we're told to wait until we get a resolved or rejected value. So we wait for resolved or rejected. And once we get that data, if it's resolved, we return to the synchronous progress that we were making before. So we'll evaluate the next line of code and the next line of code. And if we hit another await, we will do the same thing. We will wait until that part of the function returns something to us and we can move on. I like to think of the async keyword just letting the function know that there is asynchronous behavior inside of it. And the await keyword is like a stop sign for the function. You put a wait there to tell it to stop until you get resolved or rejected from that promise that was just passed to you. Do not take that promise and move on to the next line of code. Go down here and wait. So let's go back to our code and work a little more with async await. You might think from that diagram and what we have here, you already know async await and guess what? You do. You can go ahead and use this all you want, but I want to show you some of the more powerful tools that async await has where we could batch a few things and we could take advantage of some ES6 features to batch a whole bunch of requests at the same time and return them as an array or individually. So there's a lot that we need to get into, but I want to first start talking about promises. I'm going to make this wait command here up on top. So we have a const called wait. It takes in milliseconds. It makes a new promise. Remember, that's what we were getting returned to us in our synchronous code. We were getting a promise object returned to us. Now that promise object, it takes in its response here or its resolve value here. So it takes in its resolve value and we have a set timeout which gives back the resolve and attached to it is just a quick little message, received async message. And after that is the amount of milliseconds that we passed in at the beginning. So if we want this to take one second, we would type in wait, we'd invoke it with a thousand milliseconds. And let's do that in this function right here. Um, you know what, I'll put find name above this and just comment it out for right now. There we go. Okay, now we'll have a const called wait tester. So we are going to test this wait function. Let result equal wait 1000. So that will be one second. 
then we will just console.log the result. Here we will say wait tester and invoke it and give this a shot and see what winds up in the console. We just get that same promise because this takes one second to actually return this data received async message. So in order to return that data, let's do this. It's an async function. We're telling the function that it's an asynchronous function right here. And now where it says wait, we're going to type in await. We're going to give this function our stop sign before we have to wait that one second. Now let's look at the result. We received the async message. I hope that clears up a little bit about what's going on behind the scenes on these HTTP requests that we're making with, say, the Fetch API or Axios. We're going to receive a promise that it will either resolve or reject, and we need to wait for that promise to resolve or reject so that we could take the data that it gives us back and do something with it. I want to take a moment and just show you what this would look like in a regular function. So instead of having a fat arrow function like we do here, let's have a function like so, function wait tester. And before we say function, right, async, and we no longer need an arrow, it's no longer a fat arrow function. So you'll see it like this very often. People like writing it this way instead of the fat arrow way. Let's make sure it's still working. It is, we have the received async message. And I'm, I wanna clear that console real quick. So there we go, we have an error, that's fine. I just wanna show you that it is working. There it is, received async message. Now let's head back to our other function down here our const find name async. And I want to finish this up because I just want first names and that'll help us later because we're going to make several calls at the same time and having all that data uh, makes it a little difficult to see exactly what happened. But if we just return first names, we'll see that we got three first names back or four first, however many requests that we make. So let's change res to equal and I'll go to the random user generator real quick. Uh, we'll have to say results at zero. We'll just take the first result, then the name, then the first for first name. Okay, so it'll equal res and then dot results at zero and then dot name dot first. If I'm right, this should just be the first name that we get back here. Helga, that did work. Okay, great. So I'll keep this code in here so we can look back at it, but we're now going to find two names. So we'll make a const find two, and we'll make that an async fat arrow function like so. And we can let, actually let's do const URL array. That'll be equal to an array of the same URL twice because we want to make uh, two users. So that URL comma that same URL. There's our URL array. Now let yourself name one will equal fetch the URL array at position zero. That'll be the first one. And then we'll have name two. Let name two equal fetch the URL array at position one, which would be the second one right here. Notice nothing is asynchronous yet. Now we're going to open up a try catch. We should be doing this every time we make sorts of fetch calls or at least doing a dot catch after it. We want to, we want to make sure that we account for errors when we're doing asynchronous behavior. So we'll do a try catch here. So I'm going to do something that you might not see all the time, but we're going to let and then an array. We're going to have res1 and res2, sort of like we had up here when we had one res just going ahead and fetching one thing. Now we have an array of res, and we're going to set that equal to await. And this is why we went into how to construct a promise, or at least I constructed a promise to show you what it does. We're going to go to promise.all, which lets us batch our promises. So we open it up and it wants to accept an array of promises. And we can do that very simply. So we have right here, name one. 
and name two. They're both just promises right now because this would be handled synchronously. So we're going to await both of these promises or anything that was passed into this array and we're going to save it as res1 corresponding with the first one and res2 corresponding with the second one. So let's just do that and console.log res1 let's make sure that it's working. In order to get it working we're going to have to write catch here and give it err for error and then just console.log the error. That's an entire try catch block right there. So if you're not familiar with try catch blocks, you just did one. Uh, let's run this code, find two, and let's give it a shot. The only thing that'll console log is here, right here, and I have nothing else on. So yeah, that'll be the only thing that console logs. There we are, we have the object and the response not a promise. That's what's important. If it said promise here, we're not getting the data. But we are getting the data because we have a res1 here from our promise.all is getting the name1 fetch call captured right there. Now I want to do something else here. Let's let res json1 and res json2. And that's going to do what we did right here, where res is awaiting res.json as a function, because this needs to be awaited as well, so we could practice our promise.all with this one more time. So let's set it equal to await promise.all and open yourself up an array. Now that array is going to take two things, res1.json as a function comma to res two dot json as a function. And now let's get console.log the res json one, which corresponds with this. Let's give that a shot. Here we are with our results array and in there is our user. We have a name and we could find that first name through that. The cool thing about this is we saw two different ways of doing this. See how we set up variables for what we were doing. We have name one is equal to this fetch call over here. And what we did here, instead of saying maybe uh, new res is equal to res1.json invoked, we actually just put it straight into the promise.all. So both work. You could do both ways. This tends to be cleaner, but with this right here, I really don't see it as cleaner. Uh, as it's really a short line of code and it'd be much much more typing to do it uh, in variables. Now let's get the just the first names and get those back to us. So I'm going to make a new let and it's just going to be called first names. We'll just call it that. That will be equal to an array holding res json1 and res json two will be in that array there. Then we want to dot map through the array. We'll take each element in the array and we need to get to what we got to up here. We wanted to get the first name, so we had res. It'll be element.results at zero dot name dot first. We can actually copy that so I don't make a typo here. I'm just going to copy the rest of it. Come down here and write in el dot results at zero dot name dot first and if you don't remember where this came from just take a look at this response that we get back from the random user generator and you'll see there's your results array at zero is your first person there's your name and there's your first and now we're going to console log first names we're looking for two first names to be in our console now let's take a look we have Kristen and Mariana. With promises.all, we were able to batch two of our requests, and when they were both fulfilled, they both were returned. The first error thrown in promise.all will cancel the entire operation. So if there's something wrong, say with this right here, and it says AP instead of API, we're going to get canceled. We won't get a result on the second one. We're going to get canceled immediately. And here we are with our syntax error. That's being picked up by our catch right here. And you can see the same thing will happen if we do it here. 
we'll get the syntax error yet again. We know our catch is working very well because of that, but this fails quickly, which is a good thing. You don't want this to fail after it goes through every single one of the calls that you're making to the database or to this API like we're doing. You want the first one to fail and then you know you're not getting your data back properly, so just everything will fail and it'll wind up in your catch right here. And to me, this is really ugly. What we're doing right here is ugly. There's, it's not very programmatic, and there's lots of lines to code, and there's lots of lines to make mistakes on. So let's make a much smaller one, and we could call it find three or find four, but it should find as many as we want because we'll do it with more functionality. So I'm going to get rid of this for now. We'll just comment it out. We'll head down to the bottom, and we'll make a cons called find any amount and that will take in a URL array. We have our fat arrow function there. So we know we have an array of URLs being passed into this function. So we don't have to do any defining anything at the top. We could get right into our try catch and I'll get that set up try catch err and console.log the error if we get one. Let's work with promise.all a little bit differently. I'm going to let res for resolved or result, whatever you want to call it, await, oh, I didn't say async here. Sorry, you guys, say async there. Await promise.all, then urlarr.map, it was URL A R R A Y, wasn't it? Yeah, URL array dot map, and we'll take an element, and we will use it in our fetch with the element because the elements are going to be an array of URLs. The first element will be one URL, and it will be stored in this res value here. So let's go ahead and console dot log the res before we move on, so we can kind of see what's happening so far. We'll have find any amount, and we need to pass in a URL array. We know what the URL is. I have it up here somewhere. There it is. So we're just going to use this URL twice to get two different names. All right, how about three times? We'll have three different names. Uh, two, three. There's our URL array. Three of the same URL. I was about to say different. And we should have a console.log of an array of three different results. So let's take a look. There we go, object response, object response, object response. Now let's use the same functionality to get the JSON from our res here. So let's let res JSON equal await. We'll do a promise.all again. Now we'll say res.map el for element. I like using that. Of course you could use anything. el.json and invoke it as a function. And that should be working for us, but we want to log it. So console.log res json. Let's give that a shot. Here we are with three different pieces. And we have results in each one of them. Inside of the results, we see we have an array, and the first part of the array is a person with a name. Perfect. We got everything back that we wanted to from this. And this is a much nicer piece of code than what we did up here, which kind of looks like a mess now. Let's do one more map, but I'm going to do it without async await, just in case this gets a little too confusing thinking about async await and thinking about map at the same time. Uh, let's do a res JSON one more time. We're just reassigning the res JSON value, and it's going to equal res JSON dot map. It'll take in an element, but we will fat arrow function to element dot, it was result at zero, it was dot name, and then dot first. I hope I'm right. And then we'll console log the res JSON after it does that. So we're saying go through each of the elements and return element dot result at zero, so the first person in the results array, return their name and their first name, only their first name. Let's console log that and hope that we get three names back. Here we go. I cannot read property of, oop, it was results with an S. Results without an S wouldn't make any sense. Okay, here we are with three names. Latif, Karen, and I'm sorry, but I don't know how to say that. 
Now let's go through our functions and talk about them one more time just to really, really dig in here. We have this first one, this find name function. Take a look at it. We have to do async before we have the arguments here. That's where your async comes. In the body of the function, we have let res equal await fetch. We are awaiting the fetch because the fetch passes back a promise and we want a resolved or rejected value rather than the promise. So we put up this stop sign here. I always think of await as a stop sign in front of asynchronous behaviors. Now we want the res.json, which is also asynchronous, so we need to await that as well. This is all allowed because we told the function that there is asynchronous behavior, and I'm about to give you a bunch of stop signs in front of that asynchronous behavior, so you don't just run through the whole thing without getting responses from the promises. And finally, we're just getting the first name, and that's just all this dot notation to get to the first name. If you're having trouble with that, just look at the random user generator. It's randomuser.me. Now, there was one other thing I want to cover before we move from there. Here, this one. Remember, you'll see functions written this way all the time. This is the other way of writing functions, and it's the more classic way of writing them. So you say async first before you even say function, and then you can name it, and so on. But in these, async comes before where the arguments go. That's the difference between the two. Let's get this off my screen, and we'll talk a little bit more. We have two more functions to go through. Our find2 over here. Okay, this is a cool one. This is a cool one, but we made it extra complicated because I wanted you to kind of understand what this one was doing by kind of doing it all by hand here. So we have a fat arrow function. Async is before where our arguments would be passed in. We have our URL array here. So this is part of the URL array, and this is part of the URL array. There's only two pieces. Now we store them in variables. So we're letting name one equal the fetch call on the URL array at zero, this one. And we're letting name two equal the fetch call at the URL array one, this one. Then we enter a try catch block. We're going to attempt to do the code inside of the try. If we encounter any errors, it's going to be caught in this catch here. We'll take the error and just console.log the error. We're making two variables right now in this array. Let res1 comma res2 equal await promise.all, and then we pass in the variables that are equal to our fetches, res1, uh, name1, and name2. So they get stored in their corresponding values. So after we await promise.all on a name1, which fetches that first one, it gets set to res1 as its result. And after the fetch happens on a name2, it gets set to res2. So it's really that simple. The first one goes to the first one, the second one goes to the second one. That's how this winds up mapping out. Now we just do the same exact thing again right here, resjson1 and resjson2. We're going to await promise.all again, and we know what's corresponding. The big change that we made here is that we actually invoked the function inside of promise.all, which we can also do. And I thought it would just be kind of silly to write another variable for another real short thing that we could have just popped right into promise.all or into the promise.all array. Finally, we're going to let first names and we do our first mapping. So I create an array out of resjson1 and resjson2. I map over that array. I take each array element and what I return is the element.results at position zero of the results array, the name, the first name of that person. Then we can go ahead, we have the first names and two came out. Let's get rid of this for now. And finally, finally, we have the code that I hope we write, that we all write, and maybe we can even make it better, but this is the best looking code out of all the code that we have on the page here. So we have a const find any amount. It's an asynchronous function that takes in an array of URLs. We have our try catch. We know how that works. We just went over that. We're going to let a res result or resolve, whatever you want to call this. Uh, await promise.all with our URL array. That's what's being passed in, and this is what it looks like, an array of URLs. They could be different ones, the same ones. It doesn't much matter. We're going to make a call to that URL. 
So when we map over the URL array like this, we'll say each element of the URL array needs to be fetched and returned as res. Now res is going to become an array of however many URL were, URLs were passed in, res will be an array of that many responses. Now we have the let res, uh, res json await promise all again. Now we'll go through res. We'll go through this. Instead of the URL array, we'll go through the response from this. And we'll have res.map. We'll say each element in the response, give me the element.json as a function, which we actually need to wait for because that takes a moment, and save that in res.json, which will be an array of how many URLs were passed in. Finally, we have res.json equals res.json.map, and it's really exactly the same as what we did uh, right here. Uh, so it's really the same thing there. So we'll take each element, and what we want is the element.results at zero dot name that first. That's how we get their first names, and we console log their first names. So we went over a lot of asynchronous JavaScript, and we went over promise and promise.all, how we can batch asynchronous JavaScript with async await. I hope you really enjoyed this, and I hope to see you on the next one. You did a great job on this one. I'll see you soon.